Hey there everyone, Faish here, back again with another video and in this video we're gonna talk about the final, the final steps of the tight narrowing. Now this final step is broken down into two steps. The first one which is absolutely bad. I don't like it, I don't appreciate it. The second one is really something that makes sense. So we're gonna refer through the documentation. We will be using the code example from the documentation but I have modified them again a little bit because it's easier when I am actually modifying them. The code that is written here it's making sense, it's great, but I can make it a little bit easier, so why not? Why do wait for it? So let me walk you through that how this actually works. So the two we are going to talk about, actually they are mentioned as three in the documentation, but these are actually just the two topic. The first one is discriminated unions, really mouthful. And the second one is actually in a mix, the never type and exhaustive checkness. They actually kind of make sense when you talk about them uh, together. Uh, Talking about them separately uh, is not going to make sense. So let's first see what is this discriminated union. So they're making a lot of examples. So notice here, only thing you should mention or notice here is that they are using shapes, circles and square. We are also going to use that, but not like this. I have made a better example and then we are going to go through with that. I will take you back onto this never type. In case you remember, I briefly touched about the types when we were discussing that yes, there is a never type as well. You'd never want to use that. This is the place where you want to use it, but never want to be available to you in any code. So this is the point where we actually talk about them and then this exhaustive checking. We will come on to this exact same example, almost same example up here. So let's start with discriminated union. Just forget about it even exists. I'll show you the concept that is actually much better. And uh, let me open up VS Code. Here it is. All right. So this is all. We can actually just talk about this in the detection only. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So what this first discriminated union, really bad word, uh, what they are talking about is let's just say we have an interface. We call this one as circle. And uh, we actually kind of find out that in order to use any other way, we have to actually know these interfaces well in advance. For example, in this interface, uh, I have to know all the properties to find out whether it's a user or not. I also need to be well aware of the properties available in admin that there is an is admin so that I can check whether it is in or instance of or something like that. So what they are saying in the documentation is you can mention a property as the name as kind and you can name this as literal circle just like that. And similarly, you can have an interface and we can have a square. And here also you can mention the exact same property and you can mention this as a square. You get that where this is going on. So have the property exact same name in all of your interface and then you can check that whether this is dot kind of square or dot kind of uh, circle. So not a big fan, kind of a hacky way. This could be a best practice at the best, but having them in the documentation, nah, doesn't feel really good. So let's continue with this one. So let's just say we are having this circle. So obviously circle will have a radius or radii, whatever you like to call that, that will be a number. But in the case of a square, it will have a side, which will be a number. Now with this, I would also like to declare another interface, which will be, let's just call this one as rectangle, rectangle, there we go. <laughs> okay, in the rectangle, obviously they mentioned that, hey, this is a good practice. If you mention a kind of rectangle, rectangle, there would be, and rectangle will have two sides. So let's call this one as length, which will be a number and will also have width which will also be a number. So, so far so good, no problem at all. And yes, we kind of forget it that we can have a mention of kind in each one of them. By the way, it's not really compulsory that you say it kind, you can say that a property finder, whatever makes sense to you. And that's, that is it. That is it, my friend, that is it, your discriminated unions. They say that, hey, use the kind here. Uh, the example here is actually a little bit shaky in this, but you get the idea. With my example, I think it's much more easier that you can have a kind for all of them. So yeah, that's basically it. That's your first topic, yes. And uh, let's try to use this, uh, otherwise it will not make much sense. So let's just say we are having... First, let's have a type here, otherwise what we are going to check along. So we're going to say that, hey, I am creating a shape. That shape is going to be either a circle or is going to be a square. There we go. Now we can create a function. We're going to call this one as get true shape. Any arbitrary name is a good one here. Okay. In this one, we're going to say that, hey, 
a shape is going to come in, which is going to be of type shape, just like that. And we can evaluate. So the way how the first method says that you should be evaluating is by simply taking the shape. And we know that each of the shape is going to have a value of kind and we can match it for anything. For example, I can match it for circle. Notice how well the auto suggestion now comes up because of this kind, which is kind of a good. We can go ahead and return a math.pi. So pi r square is the formula. So we can go ahead and say shape. Now we are very sure that this is actually shape is a circle. So notice here, and I can go ahead and find out the radius and I can pi r square. There we go. So that's basically it. And if this is not the case, then I'm sure that if I move to line number 97, then it is a square. So I can go ahead and return uh, simply shape. And notice here, as I say dot, it says side. So side shape dot side, whatever formula works for you. So this is the implementation of the first method that we have used. But there's also one more thing. If you read the documentation, this never type and exhaustive check. So what does it uh, do and how does it work? So the basic idea is, let's just say you are creating a function and this one is going to be get area. And this also takes a shape, which will be of type shape. There we go. Now the idea is you do a exhaustive switch and case check for this one. So you can use a statement of switch. Yes, that's available. And I can just check the shape dot kind, just like we do for the ratings. We have built a lot of applications together in the courses. So rating dot five star, two star, one star, all of that similar kind of a stuff. So let's just say we have a case where this is a circle. So we can go ahead and say, I want to return. I'll borrow some code. Don't want to write this again. All right. So there we go. And this is it. So we are going to go ahead and return this. Let's go ahead and say I am having a case of square. And uh, this should be indented a bit. There we go. And if that is the case, I'm going to go ahead and return. Again, we'll borrow a little bit of the code copy this and paste it up here. Okay, this is good, this is fine, but what, there could be some more cases. So for example, we are doing an exhaustive check here, and that is working absolutely fine because we are having only two cases. Now this next step is a precautionary step for making sure that your code is future proof. If you remember, we defined a rectangle as well, but we only checked for square and circle, but there could be a case in future where now this is available for rectangle as well. Now this you can relate to something, let's just say you have defined, uh, you are working with the payment gateways for Stripe or maybe a Razor Pay or wherever you like. Now there are a couple of status in the payments, uh, maybe uh, it has been captured, it has been refunded, it has been initiated, but there is also a payment status which later on was introduced known as authorized. You didn't work out for that. Now you have created an interface for it and you have make sure this is it. Now if you'll go up here, you'll notice that hey, what this is, this is obviously falling apart. So this particular code is not working out. And also on top of this, this here seems like we are working through it, but there is now another thing, another case where we should be checking, which we are not checking. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, comment this out for a minute. Now this is working out, but we need an extra case for this one. Let me show you what the documentation says about it. It says that you should always have a default case, which should be of type never, onto whatever the shape you are defining and you should return that. Now, since this is made as a type of never, which should never be used, that is why this is important and trivial to have. This is known as the never type. So yeah, this is all exactly they are mentioning up here. So they are saying that, hey, you also have a case of default. So okay, not case, it's actually default. There we go. So in the default, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a constant. It could be any name. So uh, this could be uh, default for shape, it doesn't really mean this variable could be anything because it's a type of never, so technically it should never be used. And we're gonna go ahead and define a shape on that. And then we're gonna go ahead and say return underscore default for shape. And why are you yelling? Uh, it's not assignable to type never, so that is exactly why this is meant. And right now this is giving me a problem because I'm not checking for all the exhaustive cases. And this is exactly what you want, because if 
a new type or interface is being defined and that is also being used, you want your code to yell at you that, hey, you're doing something wrong. There should be something uh, where you should be checking. So for example, if I come up here and if I go ahead and do a check of the case, now notice here I check for a rectangle case and I return a shape dot length multiplied by shape dot width and notice here now this code is not running not acting and that is why the type never is never going to be assigned uh, as a shape so that is why it is all happy and yes this is all a good practice so this is what i liked uh, the discriminator type yeah okay -ish. but this never type is a really good check i can directly see the use cases not just for the payment gateway but for a lot of variety of checks because code always keeps on evolving. You have new types keeps on coming, new situations keep on coming. And this makes me always happy that there is a default method which should never supposed to be running instead of just relying, hey, it will never run. This is a nice checker. I like this much. So this is the end of all the values, all the narrowing down that we can have. So all the important ones I have discussed more. You have now learned that how we can read from documentation. So you can go ahead and do it. So hit that subscribe button and uh, that's it for this one. Let's go ahead and catch up in next one.